afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome to DIY crafts so today we are going to be making this really cute basket this is made out of a paper cup or out of um, a recycled coffee cup any paper cup will work um, plastic cup might be a little bit too sharp for the edges but any of these plastic coffee uh, paper cups will work pretty well um, and this is what we're gonna make out of it this is great um, if you wanted to put some cute flowers in it, it would make a really good vase for those fake flowers you have laying around the house. If not, it makes a really good pen holder for your desk, some scissors, and that's pretty much it. I mean, the way you use it is totally up to you, but I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to upcycle this coffee cup into this awesome basket. So. I'm going to leave the basket over here-ish so you guys can see it. And I just wanted to take a moment and show you guys how cool all the earrings we made last week came out. So I wanted to show you the finished product. So this is all the earrings that we made last week and how awesome they came out, including the book dragon, the hummingbird, the mockingjay symbol, and the awesome sunflower earrings. So if you missed last week's session, you can always go back and rewatch it and recycle those plastic containers and create some awesome, fun earrings using colored pencils and recycling that plastic. Alrighty, so without further ado, let's jump into today's craft. So first and foremost, you're going to need a paper coffee cup, preferably one of the ones that has like the um, grippies on the outside, but it's not entirely necessary. A paper Dunkin Donuts cup will work really well for this craft. You're going to need some type of thread um, or twine. So I have here jute twine and then I have a pair of scissors, a bendable floppy ruler or um, a piece of string that has some dimensions on it will work well. And then lastly just a single piece of tape. So let's begin. I'm going to go ahead and put my bendy ruler around my cup and I like to kind of just hold it in place here and I also like to start on the seam. So by doing that I'm going to go ahead and measure out every inch. So right about there and I'm just going to leave a line there, there and this is just so my basket weaving skills are as even as possible. Um, they don't have to be super even, but you do want to make them so it looks slightly even. Otherwise your basket, I mean, to be quite honest, I guess it really doesn't matter. I'm just kind of being a perfectionist over here. Um, if you've ever made a natural basket, not all the reeds are the exact same dimensions, which makes the basket really unique. So you might want to just freehand it, which is fine. And what we're gonna do is once we have this measured up to the best of our ability, we're gonna go ahead and cut on all of the pencil lines that I've made. So I've tried to make pencil lines an inch around all the way. When you get to the last one, it's a little bit bigger than an inch and that's okay. So now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut all the way down as far as I can go. And I'm not gonna be able to go all the way down to the bottom because this doesn't go all the way to the bottom. Further ado, I'm going to go ahead and cut. And you want to cut as straight as possible. As possible. And here we go. My other pencil mark right here. you're going to go ahead and flatten this out. So what I usually like to do is just put it on the table and squish it down so that it opens up all the way. And then what you're going to end up doing is you're going to start weaving on the outside because you don't want this colorful, awesome design to show on the basket. Let me empty this out. 
my colorful design, if you guys can kind of see it, is on the inside. But all you can see on the outside is the white inside of the cup. So it makes it all one uniform color. Okay? So all you're going to do, that piece of tape you had, just that single piece of tape, is what you're going to use. You're going to put that on the end of your twine, your jute rope, your yarn, and you're just going to go ahead and tape that to the inside of the cup. And then I'm going to go ahead and tilt you guys down so you can see what I'm doing. So here we go. All right, so I have my cup here. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the nearest um, strip and I'm just going to start weaving. So I'm going to go under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over. And I'm just going to repeat this until I get to the very top. So I'll do a little bit so you guys can see kind of how it looks. And you do want to kind of keep it kind of tight. And then the more you do this, you'll see that the edges start to lift up and that's how you're going to end up getting your basket. So the hardest part is making sure you're going under and over where you're supposed to go under and over. But it's fairly easy because you'll see that I definitely need to go under here because the last one was over. So I'm just going to go under, over, under, over, under, over. It's actually a lot easier for me if I keep it on the table for that first couple of rounds. And then as you get through it, it's going to be something you're going to want to lift up off the table. So. Here we go. And you can see some of the strips are already starting to lift off. That's great. That's what you want to happen. And so the beauty of this is if you get tired of doing this craft, you can always pause and then just pick up where you left off and you'll know where you left off because you can see the last time that you went here, you went over, so you want to go under. Or rather you went under, so you want to go over. And you're just going to keep doing this until it starts to lift off the table. And then it'll get a little bit harder. So also as you tighten it, it'll get um, easier to do as well. So here we go. Under, over, under, over. You can already start to see my weaving is getting pretty good. So if you want, as you get to this point, you can start doing it here, right like this. Um, under, over, under, over. And then as you start to pull it tighter, it's going to start to get around. Um, what you can do too, and this is what I tend to like to do. Is I start bending it a little because it's going to be the basket's going to be up this way. So, so it's up to you if you want to leave space um, or if you want it to stay really, really tight. I feel like if you leave it looser, it kind of looks a little bit more uniform and makes it a lot easier to weave. Once you start making it really tight, it makes it harder to do that weave pattern because um, it makes it difficult to get in between the pieces, but it's entirely up to you guys how you want to do it. Um, try one really loose, try one really tight and see what the difference is. And of course, post up your pictures, still waiting for people to do that when they try these awesome crafts at home. So the more you do it, the more it starts to get the shape of the basket here. Okay, so we're going to keep going here. This is actually a fairly fast craft because it's just weaving. In and out.
You can also, too, as you go, you can kind of squish this down a little to make your weaves tighter or looser. And then I'm just holding it because I feel like it makes it a little bit easier for you guys to see it, but you can always leave it on the table here and just kind of do this. find it easier to see what I'm doing when I'm doing it this way. So you can see that it's already starting to look pretty much like a basket. You guys can see right here, I don't know if you guys can see that on this camera, but see how this loop right here, I already messed it up right here so it's over over. So I can just take this, this is very sad very very sad but I can just take this string off it's not super stressful to just take this off and unwind it to that one spot that I messed up but I went over over right here and I can go over under and then just continue going over under until I get to where it needs to be here so this is super fairly straightforward, fairly easy, and it is probably the easiest basket weaving you will ever do. Um, when we resume in-person programming, the patrons that used to come to my class, uh, we did straw weaving with paper straws, and that was a lot more difficult. This is a whole different ball game, and this is much easier than straw weaving or paper weaving. Um, we've also done magazine weaving in the past and this is definitely a lot easier than that. So you're just going to keep weaving all the way around until you get to the very top. So I'll do a couple more here so you guys can kind of see what's going on. And because it's not a very large cup, it's not going to take an enormous amount of time to do it. You can see it's already coming together, it's starting to look more and more like a basket. Just like this. that pretty good. So I just want to show you that, see how I did it really loose on the bottom and now I'm starting to get tight. This might be something that drives you bonkers, the fact that this one's so loose and it starts to get tighter up the top. This one I kept tight all around so it's very uniform. This one I started off really loose and now I'm going a little bit tighter. So that might be something that will drive you nuts. If that's the case, you might want to try and keep it tight the whole way around. So I'm just going to keep on going here. And then you can do all the loops, kind of pull it tight a little, and then keep going. Let's see, there we go. And also, like I said, as you go, you can push these pieces down. That's kind of helpful. I'm trying to keep it loose because I think I like the loose look better than I like the one that's super tight over here. So it's the finished product over here so you guys can see it. And you're not going to see any of this inside. But this is a really fun and unique way to um, recycle your coffee cups. Um, I confess this is a used coffee cup. I may or may not have had tea in it earlier and all I did was rinse it and reuse it. Um, well, I washed it but 
so yeah, you're just gonna keep on weaving over here, in and out, in and out. And then I'm gonna stop there just so you guys can see the progress so far. So the beauty of this project is because the top of the cup has this rollover lip here, when you get to the top, you're just gonna tuck that string in at the top. And all I did with my last piece, I tied it in a knot on one of these little pieces here. Oh boy, my lights went off. Um, sorry guys. I, um, I tied it in a knot on one of these pieces right here and then you can't even tell where my knot is at all because it's just tucked in under one of these pieces here. So I'm trying not to bore you guys with you guys watching me weave too much, but let's see if I can weave a little bit faster here. You guys can kind of see what's gonna happen. I'm really, really, really liking the looseness. I think I like the loose basket a lot better than I like it really, really tight. Um, it just looks prettier and it looks a little bit more uniform. But just so you guys can see, there are two different ways to do it. Um, you can try this with a plastic cup, like a red solo cup would probably work pretty well. My fear that with doing it with a solo cup or any type of plastic cup is that it's going to be sharp along the edges here and it'll either fray or cut your um, string or your yarn inadvertently and then um, you'll be halfway up through weaving and then have to disregard, uh, discard it because it's been cut um, or potentially have to tie on another piece which would work. Um, but it's up to you guys. So we're getting there. It's looking pretty spectacular, if I do say so myself over here. So now I'm just looping over every other one here now that my basket's starting to take more of a shape. And I'm just going to keep spinning and looping and kind of pushing it down. So spin, loop, push down, spin, loop. I'm pushing just the thread down. Loop. And then just trying to keep an eye on it to make sure I'm not double looping like I did at the beginning. So this can be a project that you can take forever to do, or if you kind of work at it super fast like I'm trying to do here. Um, it's not something that will take very long, and then you can definitely do it with family and friends and see who can create the other basket. The other thing you can do too is so I'm gonna pause right here. You can tie this thread off on this loop and switch colors and do like a pink strip here or switch to yarn and do a different texture. Um, the beauty of weaving is you can kind of tie and um, start in on another color. So I did not really think about doing that until right now but you can definitely use different colors. I have several different colors of jute twine and I think it would be pretty cool if I paused at some point, maybe higher up here, and did a strip of red or like a rainbow color um, or several different colors you could do just to kind of make a little design as opposed to just having one flat color. Um, you can always decorate it after as well. Uh, there was a program we did not too long ago when we were open where we did a wine bottle wrap with the jute twine. And then after it was completely wrapped, we took stencils and paint pens and went on and drew some really cool designs on the jute twine itself, which looked really, really cool. So you would just take a stencil and put it up against here and it would show up on this twine itself. So just keep on going here. Almost done. And as you get closer to the top, your 
space in between your cup pieces gets smaller and smaller, which makes the weaving a little bit more difficult. But I'm just kind of bending these pieces back and going around them, and that seems to work pretty well. And because it's paper, it's kind of holding its form pretty nicely here. And then you just want to make sure you push down the jute twine as you go. So there's really no, there's no gluing here. There's just weaving all the way around. And once you get to the top, you're just going to tie a knot. And that's what's going to keep the jute rope where it is. And like I said, if you want, you can always tie a knot earlier, like down below here, and switch colors. And that would give you more of a design as opposed to just this one neutral color. But I guess it all depends on what you're going for here. Um, you also note too, as I go around and I pull down, it's pushing all that jute twine down so it's looking more uniform. Okay. I'm getting there, we're getting there. So every other one, I'm just pulling back and looping around. I'm kind of pushing it down as I go as well. So almost to the top. Bear with me. I know you guys are like, woohoo, weaving. So, but this is a really cool way to uh, recycle those paper cups that you guys have lying around the house, or if you're a Dunkin' fanatic and you have those paper cups that Dunkin' Donuts is giving out, this is a really cool way to recycle them because they all have that little lip at the top, which is going to hide your um, final little bit of twine at the top. So we're almost there. And here we go. I need that one a little too tight. There we go. Okay. So remember how I said as you get closer to the top, you'll see that my space is getting narrower, more and more narrow. You just want to make sure you push down your twine here so it's all staying uniform as much as possible. And then try not to make it too, too tight because it's going to make it difficult to get to the top. So I'm going to start loosening up a little because I feel like I'm making it a little too tight. And just try it and push it down. There we go. And we're almost there. There we go. Righty. So you'll see that they're all kind of at that even space. So not one's a little higher than the other. That's good. So as you get closer to the top, you're going to kind of finish with them all being at the same place. I'm going to back this up a little bit so I can see it better. So you want to go up as high as you can go. So try and hide as much of that white cup as possible. So you might think that you're so close to the end, which that's how I feel right now. But I want to get up as high as possible. And the higher you get up, the harder it is to kind of put that string through the holes. 
because that space is getting tighter and tighter. So I'm just kind of bending it, looping it over, bending it, looping it over. And this is good because then you know that your jute twine is not going to go anywhere. It's not going to unravel. It's pretty tucked in there very nicely. And the more you cover, the better. So we're almost there. Okay. You guys can see I'm getting pretty close to the top here. And I, I think it's looking pretty awesome. I do have to say. I really like the looseness look and it makes it a lot easier to work with when it's looser. Let's see, I lost the light again. Alrighty, so we're almost done. Pull this tight, keep looping. Here we go. I'm gonna pull you guys a little closer. You guys can just see what's going on in this little thing here. So I'm just looping over and over. So this makes for a really good pen holder. I do have to say too, it looks really, really cute if you put fake flowers in here. It looks like a very cute little vase. Um, I suppose you could put real flowers in here too. You just have to put like a plastic cup for an insert so that the water doesn't go anywhere. Um, this one I need a little too loose. So I'm just going to go and tighten it up here. So I'm just doing this. Tightening it all the way until I get to where I presently am. So there we go. That's better. So you're going to go up again as high as you can possibly go, um, just because it makes it look nicer. You really don't want to see too much of this white and too much of the inside of the cup. So you're just going to keep on spinning this. Keep on keeping on. I suppose too what you could do is you could put some fancy beading on here and do some beads on like the last row if you wanted to get really fancy or some beads on like the middle row or randomly just to kind of give it some lively robust color um, right now it's just very jute twine natural but you can kind of do whatever whatever you think works well and so I'm just going to go up all the way up until my string is kind of tucked under those curves and that you can't really see too, too much white on the outside. So I'm getting really close here. And there it is. I think that's almost as far as I can go. Maybe one more row. Um, you can always push the string down if you're having a hard time getting the string to stay. Um, just like this. You can also too go back and kind of push down all of these little individual strings. But I'm pretty much up to as far as I can go here. So you can see on the inside here, the string's pretty much up underneath this piece. And that's when you know that you've gone pretty much as far as you can go. You might be able to get one more in there. So I'm gonna try and do it a little bit higher. And then I'll find my stopping point, say on this one. Okay. So I'm gonna cut, let's see, I'm gonna give myself a little bit of slack this much. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around this one right here. And I'm gonna start going back in the opposite direction because these two right here, just these two, don't have enough string on it for my liking. So I'm just gonna go around like that. 
go around like this. Keep it on the outside right there. And I'm gonna go around this one. Just keep tucking it back in through here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just tie a knot. So I'm gonna loop it through like this. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go under the string any one of the strings in here. Carefully. So like this. And then I'm just gonna pull it through that loop. So I'm just tying just a normal plain Jane knot and pulling it really, really tightly. So there's my knot right there. You can barely see it. And then all I can do is I can just tuck this piece in in any one of these rows. Or if I want, I can just cut off this little bit of extra. So I'm just gonna point this down a little. And that's it. Tilt you guys on up. So I have here, tilt you guys up so you can see that. I have here a cute little basket made out of a coffee cup and I can go ahead and kind of fix it a little. You can kind of squish some of these down, but that is pretty much all you have. And then the inside, you have your tape, but who's going to be looking on the inside? And you can't even really see the designs on the cup anymore because the jute rope's so um, thick, but on the outside all you see is the white. So it looks really cute. So you have, that's it. This one was done really, really tight. This one was done really loose. So they're completely different sizes. Um, but you really can't tell because you can't see the lines in between at all. So just to show you guys how cool they come out, how easy they are to do. And then you can put whatever you want in here. So put you guys back down. I preferably like to put my scissors, all my supplies, and put my ruler in here, pencil I was using, and then I have scissors and a highlighter, and that's it. Also, again, like I said, it looks really, really cool at fake flowers. I don't have any fake flowers on hand, but if you wanted to make a cute little um, flower basket, this would be the way to do it. So, that is all I have for today. I hope you guys thoroughly enjoyed this weaving upcycled coffee cup project. So the next time you go to Dunkin' Donuts and you get one of those delicious coffees, save the paper cup, create an awesome craft with it. All right, until next week, I will see you guys all then. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed this wonderful program. And if you did really, really enjoy it, leave us a note in the comments, fill out our survey, let us know what we can do more, tell us what you wanna see. Until next week, I'll see you guys all then.